Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and how much honey or feed do our bees need to go through our winters? We're going to go through a double deep colony, we're going to go into a single, and into a six frame colony, and talk about what they need and feed, and, and show you kind of what we're looking for, and if we don't see it, what we're going to do and how much feed we're going to apply to get it to that level. You can feed a lot of different things during winter. There's fondant, sugar bricks, mountain camp sugar, and a couple other odds and ends that you can do. However, nothing is better than having feed that has been processed by the bees themselves, or better yet, honey, and have that in the combs. So let's get into these colonies and show you what we want to see. Now, some people ask me, you know, double deeps, is that better or, or is singles better? Or is six frame boxes better or five frame nukes? You know, which is it? And there really is no definitive answer. There's people that aren't even using any of those things and having really good success. What really matters is that you have a good queen in here, that there's no disease or mite problems, and that you've got a really nice amount of food for the bees. All right pull this on it has been rainy the last couple days and the bees are now just getting a chance to get out and fly around whoa that right there some people see that and think oh man the bees are coming after me that's not the case the bees are just now getting a chance in between all these rain showers to get their first orientation flights in and you know, the, when the bees go out for their first orientation flights they've never been outside they don't know whether to go down there sometimes they'll try to go out here and if you have a little hole in your box they'll they'll come out that way and you'll have some doing the front and the back and the lid or wherever you've got an entrance they will use it so these are just bees looking for an exit so they can get out and learn how to fly and find their way back and all that kind of stuff wow i really like the looks of that <laughs> all those bees you can see our frame feeder over here and uh, let's check these top frames and see what the weight is like I mean you can start in the middle but I, I honestly think it's better when it comes to this because we're not looking for brood we're looking for food to start on the edges and just see how much they've put on those edge frames Now on a double deep colony like this, I ideally would like to see this top box completely full. And hopefully there's a, you know, a little bit down below as well. I don't want the bottom box completely packed. Yeah, see that's, that's looking really nice right there. And I'm seeing some empty cells, especially up in here. This is all capped. Seeing a little bit of stuff right here. And that is basically completely full right there. So that's, that's pretty decent. Let's uh, go a bit further into this. But yeah, for a deep colony, I definitely want a deep here. And you know, even though we have a very mild winter compared to a lot of places, our bees still need a lot of food, and even if they have enough to survive, having a little bit extra is vital to them going full throttle. Okay, so this is completely full. It's not all the way capped yet, but there's just all kinds of food stuff in those cells, whoops. And that's just pretty much completely capped there, and the next frame over is the same. I'm gonna go over next to the frame feeder and see what we have over there. But this colony is looking really nice for what I want to go through our winters. Keep in mind, our, our winters aren't super long. Our bees will start brooding really hard in um, you know, February, building up for the spring flows. And hopefully, if we have an average spring, they're going to be bringing in nectars in March. Now, they're not going to be making honey in March. There's not enough for surplus, but enough that we're, not def we're definitely not feeding them anything. Stick that down in here. All right. We're just gonna check one more frame over here and then we're gonna pop over real quick to a single hive and see how they're doing. All right. Now you're like, so you want it, you want a full top box. What about the frame feeder? Do you leave those in? And I, I just leave them in. 
Um, I don't see any issues with leaving them in in our winters at all. Again, we're, we're fairly mild. We don't get super cold here. This one feels very heavy. Oops, pinched one. Just a little bit, almost got it. All right, so this is still not quite all the way full. I would say it's probably around 70%. And this side looks a lot nicer, more full, looks really good. So this colony right here, I think that a, another gallon of feed of something around like two to one would be just right to finish this colony off for the rest of the season. Keep in mind, there's a lot of bees in here, so they're eating a lot of food as well. So they, they can consume this. I want to put another gallon into this and just ensure that they have plenty because this population is just massive. There's tons of bees down below as well. This is gonna be a really nice honey production colony for us. And when they come out of winter and that February pollen start hitting from the maples and whatnot, these bees are, go if they have this kind of population, they have enough food to do it, they're going to build up so quickly. All right, see you at the next hive. So here we are at a couple single colonies, single deep colonies, and you can see where I've smoked this one down. You see where I haven't smoked this one down. And we're gonna check and see what they're doing food-wise and how they're doing. These are colonies that we made in August, the second week of August or the very end of the first week. Some somewhere around there and uh, they look really nice I'd say right now averaging seven to eight frames of really nice looking bees throughout and I'm really happy about that so all right so this frame right here that used to be a honey frame is pretty much empty on this side so that's not what I want to see here I want this completely full there's hardly anything on that side And the bees have really s slowed down on, on brood production. The queens aren't laying near as hard. We are on the 11th of October right now. Okay, so this is really light as well. This, this frame, it feels like it's maybe a fourth full. You can see a little bit over here. So we definitely need a lot more feed into this colony right here. I'm saying right off, right out of the bat, Right off the bat, we need at least two gallons for this one right here of thick two-to-one syrup. And we have time still here in Tennessee to do that. But we need to get on the ball. It won't be long and it'll be really cold. So this frame feels a lot better. A whole lot better. Yeah, it's just... Um, oh, there's the queen right there. Down there with her little blue dot. And I can see a lot of bee bread in this frame as well, which is going to be so vital. I'm so excited at how much bee bread there are in the combs. We didn't have this much last year, not even close, but fall flow has been really good. And that's, that's so important coming out of winter because, you know, the maple pollen's hit, but what if there's a couple weeks of bad weather and the bees can't get out or there's no pollen available? If they've got this reserve in there coming out of winter to go with any maybe maple or dandelion pollens it's going to just be so beneficial but so yeah there's nothing right here but foodstuffs it's still only about 90 percent full so i'm we're definitely needing more feed for this colony i'm just going to go over one more frame and see kind of what's going on in the brood section but pretty much even our doubles and everything the, you can just tell that the brood rearing has dropped down significantly and you can see where we're feeding and there's a lot of food stuff in the cells there and it's fine i really don't need the bees to brood up a whole lot more they are going to be brooding still for a little while and whatever they're making i'm not trying to encourage that with feeding them pollen patties or anything i want them to focus on raising winter bees and when you feed protein supplement it actually can slow down um, it, it, it puts it off and I, I want them everything they're making right now I just want more fresh healthy winter bees 
and I don't need four frames of brood. I just need them making a little bit here and there and it being healthy. We got some brood there. So I'm seeing some good food in the middle, but we're definitely going to be giving these bees a lot more. And I'm just, this time of the year, I think it's a waste of money Unless you're having a really bad fall flow with no pollens, I usually let the bees decide when to slow down on their brood rearing. Um, it's very difficult to make the bees do something they are not inclined to do. You know, in coming out of winter, the bees want to brood. They 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 want to, and it's not just um, you know just that it's just that time of the year they can sense it. And so going along with that, if we give them a little supplement that just encourages and helps smooth out any nutritional hiccups but when you're trying to fight their natural impulses it's really hard to get any progress with that so uh, you know I, I think it's just a waste myself to try to feed those pollen supplements we're gonna check this one really quick this one two gallons of feed thick syrup two to one I want to see at least two more full frames in the future all right, so we're going to throw that lid back on. And we'll dive down into the next one. But this is the time of the year that, you know, it's easy to feed our bees right now. We're still getting here, um, you know, 70s and 60s. And you know, bees can handle that thick syrup right now. Once we start dropping down, we're getting highs in the 40s. And highs in the low 50s and dropping down in freezing temperatures um, it's very difficult you can use thicker syrup but they just don't want to take it it's best to get it on early now this one had a frame feeder in it and uh, I took it out the other day and just put this frame in there it's a blank uh, comb and let's see what's going on here yeah, that's nice. You see this right here, how that, that capping looks different? This colony was a lot stronger during the flow. That's why I wasn't feeding them as much. And that goldenrod honey, whenever they cap it, it gives you a yellow looking capping. It is really neat. Now, obviously we've been feeding too, so we're not gonna be pulling this for honey. There's not enough anyways, but it's really neat to see those yellow cappings um, from the goldenrod flow. Oh, yellow jacket, get out of here. All right. So I'm, I'm seeing a little brood over there. A lot more foodstuffs. I would say it wouldn't hurt though, just from what I'm seeing, to give these gals another gallon. We just, again, we don't want them running out. And for a, a single deep box like this, I want the weight to be somewhere around the, if you were to pick this up and weigh it on a scale, including the bees and everything, I want to see 80, you know, 90 pounds. Wow, look at that queen right there. Well, not the queen herself, but a good bit of brood right there. That, that's really nice. Really nice pattern for this time of the year. It's pretty good on this side. Some of these colonies, the pattern's not quite as good because we're feeding them so hard and it's filling in the space. But let's uh, let's just go over one more. I just can't help it, you know. Nothing makes me happier than seeing nice, fresh new hives like this that are in August. They're going to really grow come February and March. They have the tools to do so. And I'm just seeing just tons of bee bread down there. Maybe you can see that right there. All those uh, little yellow spots down amongst there. I'll move the bees out of the way a little bit. And uh, let me sc scrape some of it out. Yeah, you can see that right there, that bee, <laughs> uh, that bee bread I just dropped the honey on. So, so important. We've got diverse collars in here. And a lot of times you'll, you'll see like there's capped honey up here. And then you'll see some that look a little funny down there. And they'll cap a layer of honey over that pollen sub really good looking young hive again th these splits were made in august started out really small really happy it wouldn't hurt though to give this colony a little bit more you know another gallon of thick feed just to f fill this out but i'll have to use a different style of feeder 
if I want that to happen. Overall, very, very excited with how the bees look in this strip. But let's go look at a smaller colony, a little nuke. So we're over here to the smaller colonies, and for those of you who are wondering about running six frames, five frames, seven frame colonies through winter, you totally can do it. It all again comes back to great queens, dead mites, and good nutrition, which is what we preach. Mm -hmm. Having smaller colonies that are in those healthy type of conditions will do very well, especially in places like Tennessee where it's extremely mild in winter, but goodness, beekeepers are doing it as far north as uh, northern Canada, so you totally can do it. This right here is a insulated polystyrene hive, eight times more insulated than a wooden hive. And we're just gonna peek into them real quick. And then we're gonna go over there to the Apame and look at it. And look at all these bees, they're just busy, busy. We've got a little sunshine peeking through the clouds, which is awesome. They've been waiting a couple days for it. You know, just look at all those bees right there. That's exactly what we wanna see. Just plenty of bees. It's gonna have great bee coverage going through winter. Again, great queens, dead mites, and good nutrition. It's got a brand new queen. We really did a good job keeping those mite levels really low, you know, below 1%. And you know, the nutrition of the fall flow has been very generous. And we have done uh, everything that we needed to to help that. And if they need a little bit of feed, we'll, we'll give it to them. All right, so, you know, I'm looking at this edge frame right here and looking down there and I'm just seeing nothing but honey. I'm seeing honey. Yeah, on this outer edge right here. And if they've got it all the way on the outer edge as well, that is just a great sign. Let's go over to the other hive and uh, peek into that one. I know this one's in good shape. This one's got six frames in it. I can't remember if you can actually get seven in there. But with the Apame, I know I've got seven in it, so I told you wrong. It's actually a seven frame hive. Let's look at all these bees right here going on their orientation flights. There's a little bit of pollen. But definitely no nectar. Everything's winding down. Wow, it looks really dark over that way. So we're going to be getting some uh, thunderstorms probably coming through again, which that's what they say. All right, so hopping into this hive. Now, I've been uh, really surprised with how many queens we've been raised out of both of these insulated little colonies. But look at that little um, hive right there. That looks really, really nice. Lots of bees. I think this one though, I'm not seeing that capped honey on the edges here. And that is what we really want. The trick is seven frames in these things can be a little tight. Try to give ourselves a little wiggle room here. Now at one point I had two colonies in here. I was raising queens out of it. I had the divider that comes with the Apame set and was Move out of the way, B. Come on now. Thank you. And was totally getting a lot of queens that way. It was great. I think I got half a dozen, seven or eight, something like that, queens out of this setup this year. Well, accidentally got a B there. Try not to. It happens. All right, so this is a little lighter than I'd like to see. We've got a little bit of cap stuff up here, but still this frame, I would say at the most, is 20% full. Maybe not even that. This side's almost empty, so yeah, probably about 10, 15 percent. I don't see the queen. I'm going to stick that over here. And I'll pop this frame right here. Seeing foodstuffs we've been feeding down in here, this, this frame still is only about 40 percent ish. So I'd like to see definitely more in that. Let's see what we've got over here. Now, when I took the other side out of this colony, when it was split down the middle, queen over here, queen over here, they started off with just three frames of bees and they've done a good job building up since I did that in September and expanding their area. Mostly foodstuffs here. This, this is pretty full, nothing but food. Still needs, I still need to see more. 
All right. Let's see what we got over in this frame. We're getting into some brood now. You see the capped brood right here. This is nice to see on the brood frames that we've got foodstuffs right up in here. From where we've been feeding, we've got some capped stuff up here, which is really good. Pretty much the same thing on this side. I'm going to go one more over. Definitely would like to see these uh, two first frames that I pulled out completely full. There's the queen right there. And she's trying to find an empty cell with the feeding that's been going on. She's having a harder time finding that. But they need that food. It's going to be interesting to see how well they do with the insulated hives. This is my first winter with the insulated hives and see how conservative they are with their food supply and how frugal and the insulation makes it because I mean, it makes sense to me that if you're not expending as much energy to warm the colony and keep that cluster nice, then uh, you're not going to have to burn through as much resources. So we'll see how that works out for us. But this county right here, I want to see a gallon and a half to two gallons into it. So especially small colonies like this one, I'd say 80% of the colonies that we're feeding a lot to our little counties like this one the singles over there the counties that we're not having to feed so much are your big double deep counties we're either feeding very little or nothing at all but that's because they had a giant foraging force all of late august and all of september and this county right here in early september was three frames of bees you know so they they were they just didn't have the ability to do that and so in order to keep this colony alive and healthy, we're, we're taking care of them like a good beekeeper. And uh, they're going to do well next year because of that care. But again, um, you can't treat all colonies universally the same and paint it with a really broad brush that I'm never feeding my bees because there's a lot of factors, whether it's late swarms that you catch, late splits that you make, super seizures that decrease the population to where you have a low population during the, the honey flow time of the year. There's a lot of factors. And as beekeepers, we're the ones that are kind of standing between nature and the bees because nature can be really brutal on the bees and kind of smoothing out the rough edges for our bees. Does that mean that we breed from the wimps? That's the total opposite of what we do. We breed from the easy keepers. If there's a colony that doesn't take anything to feed them through the winter, they don't need anything, they did it themselves, that is a big check mark on the list of breeding potential we want easy keepers we don't like feeding it's expensive it takes work Laurel do you love feeding yeah I didn't think so she's like uh-uh I'm done um, anyways thanks for watching this video hopefully it's maybe helps you know maybe what you need to feed what you need to look for and again if you're in a really northern area you might need another 30 to 40 pounds on top of one of these doubles maybe you don't even need as much as we have but that's how we look at it, and that's how we try to address it. And it seems to work very well for us in northern middle Tennessee. Thanks for watching our videos. And if you have any questions, leave them below.